Hi guys, thank you for joining me back here again on the 401 files. Now, I know that a few of you lovely people over here on YouTube also follow me on other social media platforms like Facebook. And if that's the case, then you may have seen that I recently rescued a puppy from Romania. Her name is Lily, she's a five month old Belgian Shepherd Cross and she's going to be getting out with me a lot more in the future to help me hunt down some of these strange phenomena. Lily arrived at my address on the 20th of December 2020 and after spending three days on the road travelling by bus, she was very nervous, very scared and it's taken me a lot of work on my behalf just to gain her trust. But with a lot of perseverance and dedication towards this beautiful little creature, I'm finally starting to see some results and get somewhere with Lily. So I thought that Lily's journey so far would make an interesting video and a great way for me to introduce the newest member here on the 401 Files. Hi guys, welcome back to the 401 Files. My name is Ben. I create content here on the 401 Files with everything that you could possibly consider thought-provoking. This could be Bigfoot, the UK wild man, UFOs and extraterrestrials, and even the paranormal. I'm here today on the North Yorkshire Moors, which is a notorious hotspot for UFO sightings and strange cryptids. So if you do enjoy any of those topics that I've just mentioned, guys, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. Drop down in that comments box below and let me know what you guys think of the content here on the 401 Files. And remember to give this one a thumbs up. With all that said, guys, grab yourself a coffee, kick back, relax, and enjoy this one. I'll see you guys at the end. third time in a car believe it or not she's only ever been in a car three times this will be the third and she's doing really really well I'm trying to expose Lily to as many different things as I can because these are all the things that Lily's gonna have to get used to because me getting out onto the moors exploring going to all these different places means that I have to jump in the car and I have to drive there and so Lily's got to be a big part of that she has to get used to these different sounds, the window wipers, the indicators, people bipping the horns, people revving their engines. These are all the different sounds that she has to familiarise herself with and so the more we do this, the more confidence she'll get. So although she doesn't know it right now, she's actually training um, and she's doing really, really well. I'm really impressed. You can see, she's pretty calm. And so one of the things that I knew straight away about Lily was that she has to fit in, she has to follow my commands and she has to adapt to my way of life. I need Lily to be a brave dog, she has to find her confidence again and understand pretty quickly that she's a valuable member of the 401 family. She needs to be courageous and not shy away from the unknown. To achieve this I knew that Lily would need a lot of exposure very early on. She would also need to see me as a great leader and be willing to follow my commands. We started out small. At first it was simple, things like taking a walk in the dark. Then it was things like taking a ride in the car and from there we slowly progressed to bigger and better distractions. So this is Lily's first winter experience. It will be your first time seeing snow, Lil. Why is it Lil? Why is it? Did 
She's doing a lot to make it, does she? She does not. <laughs> oh, yeah, she does. What is it, Lynn? No digging, no digging, you. No digging. Go on. At first, it wasn't always a success story, and Lily didn't see me as the worthy leader that I had hoped. She also didn't understand even the most basic commands, and it soon occurred to me that I was going to have to prove myself to Lily just as much as Lily would have to prove herself to me. Lily, come. Lily, come. Go on, on. Lily. Lily, come. Come on. Go on, Lily, what's this? Lily. Lily. Lily, what's this? Lily, what's this? Yeah, yeah, that's really good look. She's gone in. She's brave. She's a brave dog. Come on, Lil. Lil, in you go. So you can see the first thing that um, she's worried about, obviously, is getting into the car. She's done this a few times, but it's still quite new to her, so just trying to get confident. Lily, come. In. Go on, Lil. Go on. You can do it. Come on, babe. In you go, Lil. Good girl, Lily. Good girl. Sit. Well done. Good girl. So as you can see from these early clips here, um, a lot of the early days were just me and Lily bonding and I wasn't too concerned at this stage about her inability to follow my commands. I just wanted her to understand that whenever she was out with me, it would always be a fun time and that she's always in safe hands. After spending a few days outside together, I started to sense that the bond between me and Lily was growing much stronger. Her trust in me as a new leader was beginning to show through. And I decided to focus all my energy on now showing Lily the basic commands that she would need to know before venturing out onto the North Yorkshire Moors with me. Lily, come. Sit. Whoa. Okay. Down. Up next, team cars Come. Bed. Bed. More like cars, not on fire. Good girl, Lily. Good girl. Lily. Come. Sit. Stay. Stay. Come on, Lil. Good girl, Lily. Good girl. Good girl, Lil. Well done. Lily, come. Sit. Down. Down. Stay. Come. 
Sit. Good girl, Lily. Good girl. Good girl. So this is Lily's first walk off the lead. Very nervous, as you can imagine, but I've got faith in her. I've got faith. So the time had finally come to introduce Lily to what will become her local stomping grounds. An area that's fascinated me for the past three years. A place steeped in UFO mystery and even strange cryptid sightings. Would she be ready? Or would this all be still a bridge too far? There was only one way to find out. size of that print. This is me, I'm an eight. Look at the size of that. That's humongous. What the hell? Where's the boots that big? That is insane. There's a big guy walking around here. It's really somewhere. It's amazing how you can walk here for, for hours and hardly see anyone in any direction. I've not seen anyone now and I've been walking for about half an hour so. One thing to note is that Lily absolutely loves water, regardless of whether it's um, coated in ice, she still likes to get in there and have a paddle, which is great because she's going to be an outdoorsy dog and um, she's going to get wet from time to time. So. As you can see, it's quite deep. Let's take a photo of that. That's quite a good amount of snowfall, is that? What you found, though? What you found, Lily? So as you can see right now, Lily's trying to pull on the lead. I just want to check her recall. Let's see if that works well. Lily, come. Sit. Let's lie down, but never mind. That's a bonus. As you can see, what I do there is, because Lily's trying to pull, she's got her mind on other things. And um, for me to be able to recall her in that way, where she just snaps out of whatever it is that's taken her interest to pay her, um, all her attention on me, is exactly what I want. So that was, that was very good. Lily, come. Lily, come. Sit. Good girl, Lily. Good girl. So while out exploring in these kinds of conditions with the snow on the ground, it's always a great opportunity to try and look for prints because a lot of this snow has not been stepped on yet. Other than from the wildlife in the surrounding area. But if you're going to find any kind of strange prints, this will obviously give you a heightened chance of seeing something quite strange or unfamiliar because freshly laid snow like this it would be very hard to get from point A to B without leaving any marks in this snow so it's always a good idea to keep your eyes peeled as you can see behind me guys it's nothing but moorland for miles and miles and miles right up to the horizon as far as the eye can see nothing but forested areas and moorland this is the North Yorkshire Moors at its best to me when it snows like this here in the North Yorkshire Moors this place truly becomes a winter wonderland and on a clear night in this exact location, the amount of stars that you would see up there would be absolutely breathtaking. And that's an idea actually for a future video to get to the North Yorkshire Moors, maybe come back to this exact location and do a night's sky watch. Because I can almost guarantee you would see strange things up there moving around that maybe you wouldn't get to see if you lived in the city or some of these more urban built up areas. Absolutely fascinating, beautiful um, as always. 
and I hope that this footage right now, this video, does it justice because looking out across all this vast open area here on the North Yorkshire Moors, it's absolutely breathtaking. Like I said, I hope the, vid the video footage is doing some of this justice, but I highly doubt it. It's one of them things where you've got to be here to experience it, to witness it for yourself. So I've just pushed in off the snow um, into this little wooded area and it's absolutely beautiful in here. There's no snow on the ground as well which is a bonus because after a few miles of trudging along with that annoying crunch, 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 crunch underneath your feet, it can really start to send you insane so it's just nice to be able to walk on this ground where there is no snow. The temperature as well is noticeably different inside this woods, uh, it's a lot milder and I'm just gonna chill, take five minutes to talk to you guys and uh, look around at the scenery, maybe grab some photos, some drone footage. But that's what it's about for me. It's about getting to these areas where there are these strange reports, people are seeing strange things and not just getting here and rushing, trying to make a film, get my, get my footage and get back home, but try to absorb as much of the surrounding area and environment as I can, like all the different sounds, the temperature, the feeling of this place. That's what I want to do. I want to come here and absorb as much as I can. So when I go home, I feel like I've really done um, a day's worth of decent exploring in these areas. I'm sorry as well if I'm starting to uh, get tongue twisted, but it's really, really cold and it's had to move my lips to pronounce some of these words. I'm not the best speaker anyway, but this cold really doesn't help. I've been speaking to a lot of interesting people lately on the internet. A lot of people are getting in touch with me now through email, Facebook, and um, here on the YouTube channel as well. So that's absolutely brilliant to see that people are opening up about their experiences and experiences that they've maybe heard of friends and family. And that's kind of why I started out to do this channel in the first place. If you remember me saying a few videos back, I was hoping that by me getting out to these places and putting myself open to ridicule, um, and putting myself in the firing line would somehow encourage other people that have had experiences of their, their own to maybe not so f maybe not feel so bad about coming out and sharing their experience. And I hope that in some way, like I said, I have done that. I hope that by me getting out publicly here on YouTube, which is a massive platform and notoriously known for people getting ripped to shreds in the comments section, I hope by me getting out and talking about these wacky and fascinating um, phenomena that people who have had experiences and are watching this maybe find a bit of courage and a bit of confidence in that to be able to come forward and share their stories as well. Do you know what really fascinates me is the impact in which some of these UFO encounters or some of these UFO vehicles, aircraft, flying objects, whatever you want to refer to them as, whatever they are, it's the impact or the changes they make on the physical environment here on Earth. That's what really fascinates me. And I'm not just talking imprints on the ground. I'm talking about these white um, metal liquid uh, fragments that fall from them i'm talking about the growth rings in trees after they've left the area i'm talking about the radiation levels that go through the roof i'm talking about all that kind of thing that's a very fascinating side of the ufo phenomena for me and in the travis walton case when travis went back years later to examine some of the trees from that surrounding area they realized that all the other trees in that forest were growing at the normal rate for a pine tree but in that small area where Travis was abducted from, the trees had experienced some gra rapid growth for it. And they can tell this from the rings when the trees cut. The further apart the, the rings are, is the years or how long it takes for that tree to be growing at that rate. Then all of a sudden, if the rings start getting closer and closer and closer, that indicates that that tree has experienced some kind of rapid growth rate. And it's very strange to see that. It doesn't really happen naturally. And yeah, very, very fascinating that 
in this one area where Travis claims to have been abducted. And I hate using the word, word claimed because, for me, it's a given. He was abducted. And if you don't believe that case, there is something... There's something in your brain that's not allowing you to believe anything, in my opinion. Because for six or seven guys to pass lie detector tests more than once, Travis to go missing for a full week or over a week with the whole entire local neighbourhood looking for him on the mountainside, search and rescue, sniffer dogs, helicopters, people on horseback, everyone chipping in trying to find this one guy. He must be the hide-and-seek champion second to Bigfoot. Um, if you don't believe that case it's absolutely amazing and like I said the authenticity when you hear Travis speak as well really sells that story to me the detail he goes into about the craft and the people or the beings that were on there as well fascinating fascinating story and it definitely definitely ranks in my top five maybe my top three it's probably number one if I'm honest Roswell's got to be up there the Rendlesham Forest's got to be up there but it's definitely in my top three of all UFO abduction cases Travis Wallen Right guys, sadly this one has to come to an end, but it's been an absolute pleasure as always to bring each and every one of you out into these scenic, beautiful areas with me to get a few things off my chest, um, share a few of my thoughts and uh, get some training in as well with Lily wherever she is, because I had a bit of bad news, the lead, the extendable lead that was that was brought, bringing her out on today has snapped, now I'm not sure if she did that through chewing on it while I was talking to you guys or if it's just been snagged one too many times on branches but that snapped and it was quite an expensive one as well so now I'm on edge because I've got a five month old puppy roaming free here on the North Yorkshire Moors and the scary thing about that is that she's only had a few weeks training and will be a real test because if she carries on walking here on the North Yorkshire Moors and doesn't decide to turn back to come to me she could be walking over 500 and something miles square miles and still be here on the North Yorkshire Moors. So that's a very scary statistic for you guys, but that's what I'm facing right now. So I'm going to have to go. You guys take care of yourselves. Look out for the next video, which will be coming soon. I'm hoping to get some more 20, 30 minute videos plus out real soon, as well as some overnighters as well. So, and um, you guys stay safe. Like I always say at the end of my videos, if you can and you're in a position to do so, please do look out for somebody else as well. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you back on the next one.